In this problem, we're looking at a rod that is suspended. The rod has a length L, and we're, we apply an impulse at the bottom end of the rod, and we're asked to find um, what is the vertical location of point O, um, where um, the rod only rotates. So essentially, what is where is the ICZV, instantaneous center of zero velocity, where the rod only rotates and does not translate, okay? And so here, that's denoted as O, and the distance is gonna be from the bottom uh, to the top. Um, and that's gonna be the distance that we're looking for. So this distance, um, L, here. Actually, L is the whole distance, we're just looking for the distance from the bottom to point O, which is the ICZB. All right, so this is an impulse and momentum question. Um, and again, this question doesn't have any numbers, it's just um, theoretical. So we're just looking, we're, we're not solving for a numerical solution. Um, we're gonna get um, the solution in terms of L, okay? So we're gonna start with um, a momentum, uh, impulse, impulse and momentum balance uh, about X. Um, and then, um, and then we'll go on from there, okay? So I'm gonna draw in the coordinate system for this rod over here. Actually, I'm gonna draw the free body diagram on the side, and um, I'm gonna draw all the forces in. Um, so this is the rod. Let me draw it better. And um, this rod is going to have, first of all, a gravitational force at the center of gravity, Fg. Then we have um, the tension force, Ft, which pulls up on it. And then we have this impulse. And we're gonna call this um, I, okay? Um, so again, this is B at the bottom. Then we have O, which I'll draw in red, somewhere over here. And then we have A at the top. And then this here is the center of gravity, G. Okay, so um, for this, um, since we're applying that impulse at the bottom, um, we are, and this is only um, in the linear direction, um, our sum of momentum will look like this. So in the, so again, X is gonna be this way, Y, positive rotation counterclockwise. Um, so the uh, in the x direction we have the mass of this um, pendulum uh, times v g x at the beginning uh, plus um, the sum of the impulses. So from time one to time two, um, f of x in d t is going to be equal to um, mass times Vg x2. So again, these two are the velocities along x of the center of gravity. This is the impulse, okay? So the impulse we can, so at the beginning there's zero velocity, so we're, we can approximate this to be zero, plus this is just the impulse, right? So we're just gonna call that I. Um, and this is gonna be equal to m v g x two. Okay, so we have I being equal to m v g x two. Next, we're gonna do it. Um, we're gonna use um, angular velocities, um, and we're gonna do it um, with respect to the moment. So um, here we have instead of again velocities, um, we have uh, angular velocity, and instead of mass, um, we have uh, the mass moment of inertia. So Ig uh, omega 1 plus the sum of the integral from T1 to T2 of the moment about G in dt is going to be equal to, again, Ig omega 2. Uh, so just like before, we know that this term goes to zero because omega one is zero. So we have uh, zero plus 
here we have again the only thing is going to be that impulse or that force that we apply at the bottom here um, so this impulse is just a force over a time so a force times the time um, and so to for that force to create a moment um, about the center of gravity which is located at the center here we just need to multiply that impulse by this distance here right because this is perpendicular to this radius um, so the cross product is the whole, whole product um, and so we just take the impulse times the um, that length which is L over 2 sorry let me fix this L over 2 and that's going to be equal to um, Ig omega 2 okay so we can actually plug in Ig um, to what it is so Ig is going to be 1 over 12 uh, m l squared and then we have omega 2 okay so here we can actually um, solve for i so we isolate for i and then we plug in the impulse into here to get an expression um, for vg x2 okay so um, this we're going to call 1 this we're going to call 2. So from 2, we get that i is equal to uh, 1 over 6 ml omega 2. Okay. And then we take this and we plug it into 1. So we take this and plug it into number 1, and we get that um, vgx2 is going to be equal to 1 over 6 L omega 2. Let me write that 6 better. Okay. Now, um, why did we solve for the velocity? Because to, we are trying to find the instantaneous center of zero velocity. Okay. So if we solve for a velocity, for example, the velocity of the um, center of gravity G, um, with that velocity, we know that we can find set this distance to be the distance that we're trying to solve for. Um, then uh, we can try and find this instantaneous center of zero velocity. Okay, so let me draw in the velocities in green. So we're going to assume that this velocity is a set amount. Um, then VB is going to have a larger velocity. And um, we know that this should all cross through the instantaneous center of zero velocity um, because there we have a velocity of zero. Um, and then higher than this, we have VA being in the opposite direction. Um, so this is VA, this is VG, and this is VB. Okay, um, so again, remember this line identifies the velocity at each point. Um, setting this the velocity zero increasing with a higher radius and in the opposite direction increasing with a uh, higher radius or higher distance between from that point um, and we're trying to find this uh, whole distance here so from B to O okay um, so let's um, go back here we've solved for um, VGX2 um, and we are now trying to find um, VB. So we know that VB is just going to be equal to omega times R of B with respect to O. Okay, and that is because, um, again, this velocity is perpendicular to this radius here. And so that cross product gives us the full product. So now that we know this, um, we have, we know two velocities. Um, and then again, this is going to be omega 2 over here um, because we're just looking at the, at the final time point. Um, so this here um, is VB in terms of omega 2. This here is VGX2 in terms of omega 2. Um, and we can actually take the ratios to solve take a ratio to, and solve for that distance um, between O and the bottom or between O and G and then we can find the respective 
uh, other distance. Okay, so we know um, that um, BB over R of B with respect to O is going to be equal to um, VGX over R of B with respect to O minus L over 2. Now what is this saying? This is saying that omega 2 is equal to omega 2. So omega 2 is equal to VB over R of B with respect to O, which is this portion here. And then what is this saying that um, omega 2 is also equal to VGX divided by R of B with respect to O minus L over 2. Okay, so R of B with respect to O, I'm going to draw it in orange here, is going to be uh, this distance over here, R of B with respect to O. And if we subtract L over 2, which is this distance, we get this little distance here. Okay, um, so here, that's why we have that equation over there. Okay, um, and again, this, is, this should be VGX. 2 and then this is VB2 and this is also VB2 okay so now that we have this equation we can actually plug things in uh, so in here we can plug this in terms of omega 2 uh, in here we can plug uh, this in in terms of omega 2 and you can see that the omega 2 is cancelled and what we can solve for is R of B with respect to O directly um, and that will just be in terms of L. So um, we can we get the following. Omega B, omega 2, times R of B with respect to O over uh, R of B with respect to O is going to be equal to 1 over 6 L omega 2 over R of B with respect to O minus L over 2. So you can see that, um, let me do this in red, this cancels and these two cancel and we can directly solve for R of B with respect to O which is going to be equal to uh, 1 over 6 L minus or plus L over 2 therefore R of B with respect to O is equal to 3 over 2 L and that is our final answer